So what I wanted to do in this video today is to talk about this book, Bulletproof Spirit, by Captain Dan Willis, and he was on my podcast show. And what I wanted to talk about in bringing up um, the, I would say, inner struggles in law enforcement that's been going on forever, part of what I'm doing is to help bring some new, new solutions and break some old ways and habits of doing things that no longer serve us. And so he says a lot of things in here that maybe for you that have already been in the industry a long time, you know, maybe they're redundant or they're things, you know, you've heard many times before and, you know, and understand and agree with, but some of you, this is new to you. And I also do know that some people that are new to the industry that think that PTSD and all these other sorts of things um, that happen as a result of trauma are not going to happen to them, right? Um, and there are certain things in the academy that they're just not preparing you for on a holistic level. And so Captain Dan Willis, he does support the holistic model, which is what I do. He does believe in meditation and doing different things, but it's not just about doing yoga and meditation. And so this book has lots of useful tips including self-awareness questions that I totally love because that's what I also support and that all the answers lie within ourselves okay so I'm sorry if it is loud here I'm doing this in the park uh, so hopefully it doesn't become too terrible but um, anyway so I would have wanted to start with um, by saying that many of you may may actually forget that in the foreword by Donald Bostick who has been involved with uh, 32 years in state and federal law enforcement officer, he was, EMT, employee assistant, peer counselor, and church leader and volunteer, that he knows all about helping others, but it's almost like um, he, the instinct on the airplane that you put your oxygen, on, you put the oxygen mask on others, but not on yourself. Wait a minute. <laughs> You put it on yourself, but also what about your oxygen mask? That's what he says. What about my oxygen mask? What was I doing to ensure that I was taking care of myself in order to be able to be a strong, healthy, caring first responder who could save and influence others' lives? Years of committed service to others had left me emotionally, mentally, physically, and spiritually exhausted and out of breath depleted. I had become quite limited in my ability to serve others while remaining engaged, compassionate, healthy, and resilient. So he saw a lot of uh, benefit from this book and he includes it in some of the courses that he teaches. Okay, so I just wanted to mention that even though I totally jacked it up. Okay, so Mr. Captain Willis says, as a first responder, if you are not driven by your heart to make a positive difference with every call, with your colleagues, within your agency, and within the community, then the job is likely going to eat you alive. Prolonged exposure to violence, trauma, death, and suffering can scar a first responder spirit and take a terrible toll. Substance abuse, depression, PTSD, emotional suffering, suicide, and lost careers plague these honored professions. What I wanted to throw in there is maybe a lot of you had heard this before your careers, didn't think it was going to happen to you. The thing about it is it is insidious and built up. Uh, one of my clients who used to work at a maximum level security prison said the same thing. She was fascinated and loved her job. She didn't really realize till 10 years down the road she ended up developing Epstein-Barr. We were sleeping 20 hours a day and all of her health problems she is still dealing with. Okay, so. Maybe you think it's not going to happen to you or it happens so insidiously you don't even recognize it. So he wants you to ask yourself, how has the job affected you? How have you changed over the years? How has it affected your home life, your relationships? And even if some of you realize it, maybe you don't really know how to fix it and it's too far gone. You know, there's so many different reasons we understand. So basically he goes throughout the book and explaining how to bulletproof your spirit, how to enhance resiliency, you've heard of this word, and uh, provides lots of s several, I should say several survival lessons and then also different officers, different stories. So moving on, he also talks about the warning signs and looking at your strengths and weaknesses. And of course, like we said, admitting when you 
are not having a good day just to tell somebody else and talk and speak it out, right? Sometimes you speak it and you feel like nobody cares, just keep doing it, find somebody else to talk to, okay? Self-awareness questions addressing loss, pain, suffering, and helplessness. What is the most effective way for you? There are different ways, you just need to seek them out. Okay, or the job will concern, consume you. He also asks, how do you deal with a sense of loss of control? Do you try to control too many things in your life? How has trying to control people and things adversely affected your relationships and your quality of life? How can you focus only on those things about yourself that you can control, such as your attitude, integrity, reaction, and reaction to things? So much of your day is taken up by dealing with chaos and people out of control. We tend to, to try to control everyone and everything, to solve everyone's problems at home and tell everyone what to do. The que this question is designed to help you realize that in reality, the only things people can control are their attitudes, their own reactions to things, and their integrity and compassion. Discovering how you personally deal with losing control of situations and people without losing yourself is an important lesson. Oh, I also need to back up. So basically, um, I forgot to tell you not only that Dan, Captain Dan Willis in his career, he has crawled inside of body bags and had to pick maggots out of the bag with tweezers. And he has seen the bodies with decapitated heads and dealt with gangs and um, gang violence and murders and all of that sort of stuff. So that's another part too that intrigued me. But he really didn't see that there was a problem with his life until he was at his um, stepdaughter's birthday party and he did end up realizing that he just felt nothing. Like he wasn't happy or sad or anything. Basically emotional numb. I call it like amputating, you amputate your emotions. I'm sure in these careers, you know, you have to do that to a certain level. We have all have heard this, like I've said over all the years. So on the chapter two, spiritual wellness, he lists um, an entire list of different things and I'm just gonna mention a couple of things other than serve with compassion and making a difference. And then this is one of my favorite parts that I love to talk about because it's so true that's kind of hard to put into words when I've tried to explain it when it comes to work. You are not your job. You have to work the job, don't be the job. If your entire identity is wrapped up in the job, then you will tend to take very personally every little thing that affects your job. This can cause great bitterness, frustration, and loss of job satisfaction. Realize that being a first responder is not who you are, but is merely what you happen to do temporarily for a living. The essence of people is never what they do for a living. Rather, it is what kind of people they are, their character, and how they have affected other people's lives. Okay, on to the list. Remain involved with your interests. And of course, I would also say, and, and, um, engaging with us as a community and meeting, having friends and people outside of your industry is very important, okay? Practice any sort of faith or spiritual practice. This is extremely powerful in maintaining a positive, meaningful, meaningful perspective in life. Hopefully moving forward, right, we're gonna be shown what that is like, that you can be spiritual without necessarily following organized religion if it is not for you, okay, people? If it's not for you, I'm telling you, I'm giving you permission. Okay, continue practicing self-awareness. It's an ongoing process. How are you changing and growing? Seeking meaning and purpose. What provides?